All righty, we are live. How are y'all doing this morning? Yeah, it's a early morning stream, uh, 2.15 in the morning. Uh, I was with somebody earlier, and they were showing uh, a few things. Uh, and Somebody said they didn't get, uh, they got coins uh, from somebody, but the envelope was torn open. And that reminded me of something. Uh, I've been promising to do this for a while, about two months now, I think. Month and a half, two months. Been threatening to do it. <laughs> yeah, threatening to do it, promising. And, you know, I just forget about it. So now we're going to do it. So anyway, hey, hey, everybody. It's Caden Coin Hunter, a.k.a. Boudreaux, how y'all are, and we're going to talk about something else uh, later on, too. It's a, a sad, sad story, uh, but I, I'll wait for that till a few people come in. Uh, it it kind of uh, got me down a little bit, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll mention that later on. Randy Torboli, how you doing, morning, me? What's going on this morning? Appreciate you coming in, buddy. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to do something. I forgot to hop out my chat. Let me do that right quick. Make sure my when I get to my YouTube side here and it is live and I want to mute myself on that. Oh, yeah, I thought so. Got to wait on that uh, commercial. There we go. All right. My commercial's over with. See, we got three people in here so far watching. Kayla, number one fan. How you doing? Pat Paulson is in the house. Oh, wow. We look here already. Straight out the gate. Boom, 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 boom. Boom with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Pat Paulson. Kayla, number one fan. How you doing? Uh, I'm just joking. How you been, Cajun? Oh, I didn't see a joke. Oh, go to sleep. <laughs> All right, Kayla. Yeah, how's your dad and brother doing? I uh, saw your dad the other night. In fact, he was in a live panel with me not long ago. So, and then Randy Taraboli, uh, the, the red fan man. Y'all go check him out. Big Silver Bullion. Cage on. What's up? That's got to be Ant Order. I know. That's got to be Ant Order with them two red exclamation marks. So uh, let me pop my chat out here. And uh, get a few people in here. I was just going to make a regular video with this, but I figured, well, why not do a live stream and get a few people involved? They can put their two cents in on how to do it. Also, if they want to, if they have a different way of doing it, but this is the way I ship my stuff out. Uh, and envelopes, you know, regular uh, envelopes like this, you know, not not uh, the bubble wraps. I have a way of doing them also because I print my own labels. I print my own labels. All right, let's see here. Uh, now we got seven people in here all of a sudden. All right, that works. Uh, Uh, 
what I'm going to show tonight is uh, I don't mind how they get shipped as long as they don't put tape on my coins. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, when I ship coins, they're in a flip, you know, like this. They in a flip, like that. Or one of these. Like that. Uh, Guard house flips. Whoa! Power Stroke Jude! Boom, 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 with a $2 super sticker. What's going on, bro? Crackling grease. That's a fact, Jack. You know what? Uh, Jude, I thought I sent you a link. Let me recheck that. Let me recheck it. Make sure. Well, you know what? Let me uh, let me just go ahead and resend it anyway. It'll take me longer to find it than to resend you a link to jump in here. I got a couple of links sent out. Uh, you know, on the on the West Coast, you know, West Coast buddies, yeah, buddy. So anyway, uh, these guardhouse flips like this right here. That right there is a, like Big T says, a weedy. And 1956 Denver, weedy. And that sucker did not see the daylight until I took it out the, uh, the road. It was, and I took this out about four years ago, I think, four, about four, three or four years ago. Brand new Fed Bank Road. Federal bank roll of pennies, uh, Lincoln cents, put it that way. So they were brilliant, uncirculated. And I'm sending, I will be sending this off in the envelope. I already got it promised to somebody. Well, not that penny, but anyway. Boom, boom, got the address written down already. But a sticker, one of my channel stickers, right there. And uh, search my email for sticker, and guess what? His name popped up. So I'm going to use this as an example tonight on how to ship coins and stuff properly that way the machines don't tear them up and i'm gonna tell you something right now even if you pay it's in my description box even if you pay they say oh you need an extra stamp so they don't put it through the machines guess what they lie they lie to you I'm going to show y'all something. Here's our bank statement. You see that on the bottom? Right there? See all them little barcodes? Yeah. When the bank mailed those out, it went through a machine. Boom. And it doesn't matter what you mail. It's going to go through a sorting machine. And if your envelope, envelope, however you want to say, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, your envelope, like that right there, is going to have that on the bottom. I don't care if you pay them $6 extra not to run it through there. It's going to go through it. So, yeah, the post office lies to you. That's how they make their extra 15 cents. Uh and then you do uh, a million people pay that over a five-year period of time. Guess what? That's a lot of money that the post office makes. And it's not like they didn't uh, get a $28 billion stimulus package two years ago or a year and a half ago. Yeah, the post office got $26 
billion dollars to refit and hire employees, and guess what? It's not happening. Everybody's waiting on mail, losing mail. Yeah, it, it, it don't add up. Two and two equals five with the post office and their money, you know. I don't know who's putting money in their pockets now, or general postmaster or whatever. And, you know, somebody please call them and tell them to call me and I can tell them how to run the post office right. You know, uh, he might he might have a Ph.D. in it, but I got more common sense than he does. So, okay, be right back. Yeah, well, that work. Okay, yeah, you got to go lean off the dock, huh? Yeah, Aunt Arda, uh, I see you got your name changed there, Mona Me. That works, big silver bullion, right? If they wouldn't have them two uh, red exclamation marks at the end of it, I would have thought it was Big Red, you know, Redneck Stacker, you know, changing his name again. But that's just me thinking. Okay, I guess I'm going to start this off a little bit. Uh, I was waiting on Power Stroke Jude to come up. Check your email, uh, dude. I wasn't going to send one to uh, Ed the Otech guy because I know he's already in bed. Uh, he probably had uh, one of them Saturday night hustles or something or barbecued today with somebody like, uh, like I did yesterday afternoon. But I finished my stuff early. I didn't have to do a live stream or show it on live. And I sure enough wasn't about to start no propane tank, neither. Uh-uh. No, I don't know. No. We got a different burner over here now. We got a brand new hose and regulator for that. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna get... Uh, I ain't gonna have no propane tank blow up on me again. Or flame up on me, I should say. It didn't blow up, it flamed up. If it had blew up, I don't think I'd be here right now. I'd have a bunch of shrapnel in me. Faceless Mall, what's going on, bud? How you doing? And Kayla, uh, oh wow, oh you didn't know about that Kayla, about that propane tank uh, going up on, on us a couple of weeks ago, yeah we were balling crawfish, well we started to ball crawfish, put it that way, the only thing I, I managed to cook was my riding lawnmower, that thing is melted, it's tore up from the floor up. Yeah, yeah, big time. Everything is melted. The engine, not the engine, okay? Don't quote me on that. All the plastic, anything that was meltable on the engine was melted. And I still got to, I'll tell you what, it's going to take a while to clean off the block or whatever to make sure the block is not stressed, warped, or whatever. Because that was a real bad, bad fire. It was, I mean, the fire department came over here. They had the water hose on it, high pressure hose, and a guy that I knew, he works with the fire department, he put his you know coat on. That's all he put on was just his coat. He didn't have the big fire suit, none of that, like we used to wear when I was volunteer fire, in the volunteer fire department, uh, <clears throat> put on his coat and his gloves, heavy duty gloves, and they had water going there 
to cool his hands down, and all he did was turn the valve off. That was it. Fire gone that quick. Marie Hansen, how you doing? Hey, uh, hey there. Uh, you know those 999 Morgan Silvers they sell? Are they really worth what they claim? Uh, Miss Marie, uh, are you talking about the point nine 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 rounds? Because uh, you didn't say dollars in there. You said Morgan Silvers. Uh, it depends on who you buy them from and what price they're asking for them. Uh, if you buy from a reputable dealer and they're around $35, 30 bucks a piece, yeah, because they that, that's just a regular round, a generic silver round. Uh, they have, you know, the Lady Liberty on the front, and I don't know what's on the back. Actually, maybe the Eagle, you know, just like a Morgan dollar. But if it's real silver and they want like 30 bucks, yes, yes, it's worth that. Uh, I think silver right now, uh, I have no idea on the price of silver. I wish money would be in here, but money has his uh, grandkids with him, so he couldn't pop in tonight. Uh, let's see, big silver, big silver, buddy, and Miss Kayla looking, and I was every morning. Okay, oh, Miss Ida Harry, yeah, I still make a few vids, and I'm still pouring silver. That'll work, man, that'll work. I mean, uh, big silver. Uh, I'd say it was well done. Oh, yeah, the lawnmower, yeah, it was well done, yeah. It wasn't a uh, rare, medium rare, nothing. It was well done. The uh, everything plastic, rubber, whatever. The front tires are toast. Uh, oh, you going to bed, Jude? All right, all right, buddy. Well, appreciate you coming in. Uh, anyway, uh, it'll take me a little while to clean off that block. You know, get it unbolted, all that stuff. Uh, you know, we'll, I'll do it a little bit at a time. You know, probably in a month it'll be off of there, maybe cleaned up. I'll have to make sure it still turns over. You know, it turns. If not, then, because it's an overhead valve engine. It's not a flathead IC commercial engine. Uh, it, yeah, it was just a bad situation, bad situation. But the the ass end of the lawnmower, you know, the back end of it, the axle transaxle, you know, is still good. You know, I do know that for a fact. You know, you know, the belt, you know, the drive belt underneath, and all that, where from the engine, you know, underneath that there's a pulley on the front of the lawnmower riding more. Uh no, I know that built shot. Uh, Money maniacs, what's going on? What did you need, Kate? And I'm here to say hi real fast. Oh, I just, you know, wanted you to come in. Uh and then uh Miss uh, Marie Henson had some question about some silver. You know. If you want to come in, I'll send you a link real quick. Let me uh, go ahead and do that anyway. Since you're awake, I thought you was going to bed. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he makes a little noise in the background. I don't matter. We can deal with that. You know, my granddaughter's over here, and she hands the camera up with me every now and then. She's sleeping right now, though. Anyhow. Okay, yeah, there you go, man. Check your email, buddy. 
anyway yeah i'm gonna uh show how to properly send uh, coins and stickers or what have you in envelope with some of this stuff and this is shipping tape yes it is shipping tape but i only do certain things with this shipping tape that's it certain things Monsieur Money. <laughs> hey. Hello, hello. Yeah, I, no, my my granddaughter will be, or my granddaughter, my grandson. Uh, he gets dropped off at seven thirty every morning, and I'm watching him for a while uh, because uh -huh. both parents are, are working day shift. So that's why I said I had to go to bed earlier. But unfortunately, my leg and my everything because everybody knows i need surgery and i'm uh, waiting yeah. for it and it's unfortunately keeping me awake right now so i'm waiting for medicine to kick in so yeah I can go to bed and i'm waiting on my mri uh, my doctor setting up a mri appointment <clears throat> and that way he can uh uh uh, read that or let the radiologist uh, the MRI guy read it and you know send him a disc uh, so my doctor can look at it and and then submit that back again for surgery when we had that last ice storm what two three three years ago I think it was when we had that ice storm in Louisiana uh, South Louisiana and North Louisiana. I mean, it, it was bad down here. All the roads were closed, you know, interstates, you know, in certain areas. Uh, the, the bridges, overpasses, all that was closed. You had to just take the off ramps and then get back on the on ramp, you know, so that clogged traffic up a little bit. Um, but th there wasn't a lot of traffic, put it that way, because everything was shut down. What was, uh, oh, uh, you got a lot of feedback. Um, Ooh, me? You know, I, no, did for a I, minute. I, I, oh, I heard I got a little my, feedback. Hang on a minute. It might be. I got my earbuds in, but I, I, uh, not me, no. <laughs> I just killed the YouTube side, so we'll just see if that was me. That was me because I don't hear it no more. It was just in my headset for a minute. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, what did uh, Marie Henson need again? Yes. Oh, she was wondering about the uh, three nine fine mm -hmm. uh, Morgan rounds. Oh, those were the 2021s. Yes, um, they had a very uh, big. They had a very big hype on them. Uh, the San Francisco, the Denver's, the CCs, and the Phillies, along with the uh, New Orleans, the O's. Um, uh, they were very popular um, when the hype first came out. Then they dipped down because when 2022 showed up, everybody thought that it was going to. Um, make more uh, each year that's what they decided on but then the mint decided they can't get planchets so they're not going to uh do them so now the 2021s are starting to go back up again because they only made them for one year um, okay i i don't know which one she were talking about uh oh. because her comment right there february 2021 she was talking about the ice storm so I don't know. I don't know if you're asking what's the hype on them. I don't know if you're asking um, the worst. What's, what's worst. the going? What's the going right yeah. with them right now? Right. She um, said, "Are they worth it?" All she said in the comment was three nine fine Morgans. Um, and I didn't know if they were the generic hmm. rounds like the Buffalo nickel, the Mercury dime right. design. Yeah. You know, take it for no, take it. All I can tell you is. Speaking from a dealer's point of view, take it for what it's worth, Marie. If you were to bring it to my shop, or if you were to bring it to me, and you would say, "How much would you buy this for?" Um, a dealer is going to pay you about one twenty with the box and the COA and everything together. If they're graded, that's a different story. Yeah. Um, depending on if they got a sixty-nine, if they got a seventy, if they're first strikes, it it, all that matters. Yeah. So 120 because the dealer is going to end up selling it retail for 150 to 160. They're going okay. to make $40 Mi off that coin. 
Miss Marie, well, which which Morgans are you talking about? I mean, which ones? Uh, yeah. From the Carson City, uh, that that limited edition Morgan dollar. Now that now they came me, out, or the San Francisco, or whatever it was. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, that does not count the Carson City that they made. That counts the Philadelphia, the San Francisco, the Denver, and the O is the price on those. If you have the CC, that's what everybody's looking for. Everybody says they're looking for the Denver. Maybe that might be so for certain people that are trying to get the full set, but everybody is wanting the CC. Um, so okay, she said the limited. So it'd be the twenty twenty one. They are limited, um, but then it just depends on: Do you want them from the mint, like from the in the box, or would you want them from NGC or PCGS? Um, at the what, Bella? Yes, what, baby? Really, talk to daddy. Yeah, sorry, I got that right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right there oh. talking to me. <laughs> okay. Yes, puppy dog. Yes, yes. Yeah, puppy dog. Kind of have daddy's attention. What? Go play with mommy. Um, Gran Turismo. What's up, Mona Me? Hi, Gran Turismo. Boxing cases, just a minute. Boxes in boxing cases. Okay. Um, so you're yeah, for the if you're talking what a dealer would pay if you're trying to sell them, you're about one twenty. Now, if you're going to go buy them, eBay coin shop you're going to be anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars a piece depending on who's selling it where they're selling it you know um so shop around um i wouldn't pay no more retail than 150 for them if uh, anybody asks for more than that well that's their prerogative um you know i've had people even on my channel that's asked for more for the and there's nothing wrong with that um, you know, the hype is there because, you know, they're just going to go up. So people have already saying that, well, but that's not where the market is right now on them. Where the market is right now is about 150 to 200. Now, what's to say in six months or a year, the market's changed, obviously. Um, but if they don't come out with any other ones, then of course, it's just going to go up at, after time. That's why people are already charging, you know, 200 plus. Now, as far as your CC... Um, that one's just very well known. Everybody wants the CC. Um, that's, you know, anytime you talk a Morgan dollar, they want the, you know, GSA hordes. They want the CCs. They want the, um, uh, we call it the, the, the red package. You know, I forgot what that's called, but the, the red ones, uh, and they all want the CCs. And so, yeah, there's other Morgans that are very collectible, very sought after. Your 1899 Philly, of course, your 93S. But uh, that's just, uh, I didn't mean to get on a CC kick, but that's just the way it's, uh, the way it is. Um, okay, as for, uh, first day issue, 2021 MS69. Okay, so that is first day of issue. That that's was, good information. That, that right there would be, by, uh, would be, um, First day of issue, it sounds like NGC to me because PCGS would put on first strike. It's kind of like um, um, NGC likes to say early releases. PCGS likes to say first strike, um, yeah. mm -hmm. which they also, content, they also call it um, first day issue or first issue. Um, Stuff like that. So, um, that being said, the first day issue is a little better than a first strike, honestly, because they could say a first strike was, well, they did that one the fourth or fifth day. The first day issue, they can they could swear because they got it in by a certain time that, well, this had to be one of the first ones that they ever did. Um, so, honestly, that first day issue is going to carry a little bit more, and since it is graded. Those prices are probably going to jump an extra 100 to 150. So now you're talking, you know, I would probably buy it at around, I'd have to check the numbers real quick, but a hard guess would be I'd probably buy it. I would buy it around 275. Um, but obviously I've got to make money out. So I'm 
retailed on that's about three twenty five, three to three twenty five, um, and that's uh, and that's if you're competing with some other people in town. Um, that's always good to have as other dealers in town because they're always going to compete with each other. See, if you just have one dealer in a town uh, or in a city, it's not necessarily a bad thing because you got one, but they could lowball you. That would be each, yes. They could lowball you um, just because they're the only ones there. So I kind of like I kind of like it where there's two or three different options that you can choose from, and you can call around and just like, hey, how much are you buying Silver Eagles for? Hey, how much are you buying ninety percent junk silver for today? You know, what are you buying this for? And you can call around and who's ever got the best price, obviously. So um, it's 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 nice to be competitive uh, when you own a business, um, but. Uh, uh, but as far as your, uh, to Philadelphia, uh, yeah, so that, yeah, so 275, um, first day of issue, maybe even around 250, because I'd probably have a price tag of 300 on it. Um, because a dealer puts in that much money, they're going to want some sort of a return. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the best way to do it. So, anyway, I hope I answered your question. Um, I know I rambled on a little bit. I'm sorry I didn't mean to. Um, I was just trying to get you enough information. Um, a lot of dealers, and there's nothing wrong with this, they do check eBay sales. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with eBay sales. Um, but, oh, yes, ma'am. When can we have Missy's ship from below again? When can we have what? When can we have Missy's shrimp combo again? It's very important. We need to know. You need me to make it, I'm assuming? Because she ain't shipping. But you can still ask me. She can make it for us again. You can go away. <laughs> Apparently, Miss Money's over here begging for Missy shrimp gumbo. Go away. Oh, I thought I heard her say something about Missy's, uh, the gumbo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When oh, y'all were down me. here, oh. oh, I gotta hold the baby. Okay, hold the baby. Oh, okay. Hey, y'all should have named the dog Gumbo. Uh, <laughs> now her name's her name's Bella. I know. Y'all should have named it Gumbo. See? Right there. Right there. There's the camera. Oh yeah, Draco. Yeah. Rest in peace, Ag Price. I salute you and Godspeed, brother. That's right. I was gonna talk about that. In a little well, bit. That's okay, one of the topics go. I'm going to get in no. uh, after I do this little educational thing for about uh, uh, two thousand minutes. Two thousand two five and ten dollar gold eagles. Um, basically, whatever melt is, um, dealers are buying them at thirty dollars over. Um, but they're selling them for seventy to seventy five over. Um, really doesn't matter on the gold eagles if they're graded unless they're seventies. For some reason, when it comes to the gold eagles, if they're 69s, they look at them like they're raw. I don't know why. It's just the way they do it. No, that's not how I do my business, but that's just how most dealers do it. Um, I'm just going by dealer standpoints, not retail or anybody else, but that's what we would pay. Um, I said thirty dollars over spot. They would pay them, but they're going to sell them for seventy-five, maybe more, over spot. Um, and that depends on day to day. I mean, they could say seventy dollars yeah. over spot today, and gold could dip or gold could jump up, and then they could be at a hundred dollars over spot uh, the next day you walk in. So gold gold prices jump every day. I never have a set gold price. Uh, in my case, uh, unless I'm at a weekend show, because it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, gold really doesn't move on the weekend. So whatever it was Friday, it's going to be that way Sunday. So that's how I'm able to put price tags out for my gold. Um, but as soon as Sunday's gone, that price tag is ripped up and thrown away before I leave the convention, because gold's going to change on Monday. Um, that's just how I have to do it. That's how a lot of uh, uh, dealers do it. Um, I tell you one thing though, and I understand a lot of people. Um, I don't understand people selling 
um, silver uh, when it's $22 an ounce. I don't understand. Bella, drop that. I do not understand people selling generics at 30. I'm what? I can go to my I can go to a retail store right now and get them for three over. Some are four over. I get them for 26 right now. Why am I going to buy them for 30 with you? Oh, look, I'm talking generics. I don't understand why Britannia's um Philharmonics Maple leaves, um, the government back stuff, but not the premium stuff, and they're wanting fifteen to twenty dollars over. I don't understand that. I understand the Eagles. That's why I didn't mention the Eagles. The Eagles, for some reason, have the high premium, but all that's coming down. Um, I mean, I can. I, I'm getting premium silver. Uh, when I mean by premium silver, is I'm talking the government back stuff at thirty dollars each. Britannia's, Maple Leaves, um, you know, maybe I'm lucky where I'm at because I got, and I'm not talking my wholesalers. I'm talking just going to my, going to regular coin shops. Um, I live in Arizona. I'm right across the bridge from Laughlin. Give you guys a picture on the map of where I'm at. So I do business in Lake Havasu. I do business in Kingman. I do business in Vegas. I do business in Laughlin and I do business here in Bullhead. Um, all around Route 66. All around it. And I'm getting them for $30. So I don't understand people on YouTube saying they're giving them away at 31 I don't understand the hype. I, that's just me. Maybe this is a rant. I don't know. I just don't understand it. It's not my product. But that's why I've not been buying lately. Because I'm not going to spend $32 plus $5 shipping for a Britannia. It don't make no sense to me. Yeah. Uh, Draco, yeah, you sure can. Oh, if you want to share a video, you sure can, Draco. Uh, you have a blue wrench, Draco. Yeah, you know what, Draco? You got one of these, share it Draco, up. one of these blue wrenches. And actually, Draco, Draco, Big T, and Curtis Lowe. Those three people were my first three moderators. When I started my Cajun Coin Hunter channel on my first live stream. Um, real quick, Cajun, then I'm going to get off here because I do have to get to bed. Like I said, I got two more things. Um, I don't mind putting this out there. This is my business card. Yeah. Uh, oh, Marie, if you, oh, if oh, you oh, ever. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. If you okay. ever want to, if you there ever want to get a hold of me. People call me at all day and all uh, at all times of the day and night. That is my phone number. That is my business phone number. I answer every call. That is my email. I answer every email. Um, so if you have more questions that you want me to take a look at, um, I'm more than happy to do so. And this goes for anybody in chat. If you may have something that you want me to take a look at, feel free. Um, you know, uh, my phone is always right by me. That's the business phone that I use right now because I don't have a shop, so I, I'm always portable. Um, and I answer every call. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, the sales, uh, the 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 spam people don't call me anymore because I tried to sell to them because I got tired of them calling. So I just started trying to sell to them, and they didn't like it. So they, they, I think I'm on a do not call this guy list. I don't know. I haven't got a call in like a year now from a spam person. But um, <laughs> I haven't. I got tired of them. I'm like, they're like, Hey, can we interest in you? I'm like, um, since you called my business phone, um, you, would you like any gold or silver today? This is a gold project click. I'm like, oh, well, I guess not. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, if I get a toll free call number oh, okay, or whatever, uh, okay. I always, yeah, and, always uh, answer the phone. Uh, uh, KBON radio. All right. And they said, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, uh, 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 excuse the call. And, right, but and they don't say that. They just say, oh, I'm sorry. I said, well, mm -hmm. who are you with? Uh, well, I'm with an insurance company, and I didn't realize I was calling a radio station. I'm like, yeah, you did. 
<laughs> and, and you know, because you're not supposed to call a radio station or a right. TV station with soliciting calls, you know, right. telemarketers. That's illegal because it's yep. an FCC uh, company, you know. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay, you took a screenshot of it. I'm glad you're near Dallas. Uh, Marie, we are looking at moving. Um, I don't know if you know where uh, Enos is. Um, but it's about 35 miles from Dallas. But um, when we move, yeah, we're looking at we're looking at either Pennsylvania uh, to set up our store, or we're looking at um, a suburb around Dallas. We're going to set up uh, a Money Maniacs, uh, our first store, uh, and that's going to be in the works. Um, right now, I'm just waiting. To, unfortunately, I'm walking with this. Unfortunately, I got surgery coming up, and I'm not really doing much of anything right now. But sitting here on my tukish. Um, selling on YouTube and Facebook and everything for now, just to get it. May I help you file a fraud claim today? You will click right, <laughs> right, exactly. But anyway, okay, I'm glad you took a screenshot. Yeah, give me a call or send me an email. Um, and if and if people and if new people buy stuff from me, I usually send them a, one or two of these. Um, I try to send two because you know if you misplace one, you've got to back up. So, yeah, so I've got a friend there, um, and Cajun's got a friend there. You might know him by the name of Mater. And, hey, Mater's workshop. <laughs> and uh, he's in Enos. And uh, so uh, we're looking at uh, we're looking at going out there soon to, to visit him after my surgery. We're going to take a trip and go say hello and... Uh, and hope y'all can hope y'all can come back down here again. All right, and well, we're going to start. The main purpose of us going out there, obviously, is to say hi and hello. But um, it's half business trip because we're going to um, uh, seek out properties, and we want something where right. the shop is on the bottom, but we can live on top. Yeah, you know, something of that nature. Yeah, I was telling it's... you about Alec too, Alexandria. Right, you know, and or. Uh, around ball you know you know in the alexandria surrounding area because right. i don't think they have a coin shop in alexandria i don't think right. they do. You know? but but anyway that's uh that's where uh or natchitoches you know uh, i know for natchitoches. sure they don't have a coin shop in natchitoches i had to change my pcgs calendar it's, i'm over here on april we're at the end of may Oops, i forgot that month altogether <sighs> I didn't change my calendar too much. No, maybe, maybe I should have started my packaging uh, how to uh, earlier. <laughs> That's uh, all I right. Probably, I That's apologize. All right. I, I'll just but... tell everybody to go to the forty-one minute mark or forty-five minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I apologize, Cajun. Uh, I'm gonna get off here, sir, because I do have to get up for the grandbaby. Okay, well, no, no, I want you to stick around. I want you to see how I do it. I want you to put your input on it and everybody else's input. That's why I'm doing it live instead of just a regular video. All right. I will, about? I will yeah. stay for you. Extra yeah. coffee for me in the morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, I mean, just doesn't take five. You're fine. No, uh, I, I, love, I love you and Missy to death. I'll do actually, it's going to take longer than five minutes since, you know, we all talking about it. But yeah. anyway, uh, this this one thing I'm doing right here. OK, this is yes, yeah, right at the 45 minute mark. So, yeah, that that works. Uh, and this 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 one here is going out to uh, Mark. See, I got. Wait a minute. Right. There we go. There we go. This one's going out to Mark Gulick. Okay. He's a regular on Big T's uh, coin channel. He's always and, on mine. And yours. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he's always up in the panels. Barnes. Hey, what's going on, Morning Me? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you over here. Okay. Let me. Uh, and that's what and what that what he just held up. I don't know what he's going to be talking about, but what he just held up is if you guys pop in and listen um, when that's we it. talk when we talk risky ship. 
That's a risky ship. Unless it's just uh, a piece of paper or a sticker or something. No, no, no. This is how to ship in a regular legal envelope. Shipping uh, a few coins. Okay. I'm not talking about uh, 10 Morgan dollars, uh, 10 Kennedy halves, or nothing like that. I'm talking about shipping a few coins. Uh, I have shipped uh, 10 coins, but not heavy weight coins. Okay. Hmm. Not heavy stuff. You know, like. Like I said, you know, uh, eight silver dollars, Morgan dollars, or peace dollars, or Kennedy half dollars. No, I'm going to put that in a yellow padded envelope. This is just how to ship uh, four to eight coins in small flips. That's right. You wasn't here earlier, Money Money. Uh, uh, like this no, stuff like right. that you know yeah i'm going to show the proper way to do it uh without the envelope tearing up and uh it like i said in the description box below uh no matter what price you pay uh they always say oh you need to pay an extra uh stamp and it won't go through the machine. And then they stamp it, no machine on the envelope. The lady at the post office or the man at the post office is going to put non-machinable. Guess what? Like I said earlier and showed earlier, that's still going to be on the bottom of it. That means it passed through the machine. And if you did not uh, properly... Uh, prepare your envelope that that sorting machine is going to tear it up it's happened to a lot a lot a lot of people it did yeah so i showed this it's a piece of construction paper from a walmart okay you can get 300 of these things for Two hours. Oh, and I'm froze. My camera froze on me. Oh, there we go. We back. All right, here we go. And I wrote a little note. Uh, thank you for your support, Mark. You know, Mona me, and I signed it, Cajun. All right, you fold it, and and the way I do it looks like an envelope, like that. The way I fold it, it fits into a regular legal envelope. Okay, now what I need to do is <laughs> do my camera. Let's see. That's too low. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can get that a little better. Oh, you know what? Make myself a little bigger. Now that sign. Now that look. Oh yeah. Okay. I've got a little note rope right here. Let's fold it. Thirds. Smaller than thirds. And also I'm I'm sending him a penny. He wanted a sticker. I'm gonna send him a nineteen fifty six Denver uh Weedy. A weedy. All right. Now, here's what I do with my, uh, with my pennies, uh, flips. And this tape does not tear up paper flips. Okay. This is blue painter's tape. I recommend the green better, green tape better. I do that. I take one corner of the flip. Let me see that. There we go. I take one corner of the flip, 
That's a big piece. And then I'll do this. I'll take the other corner. That way it doesn't slide. Anyway. All right. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is a, a 60D. Yeah. 1960 Denver. Free and uncirculated. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn that upside down, though. Tear off two little pieces of that. I'll put blue shipping tape, I mean, blue uh, painter's tape on that. Right there. You little sucker. Stuck in my finger. All right. There it is. Blue painter's tape. I recommend the green. Do not, do not use. This. Do not use that shipping tape on this right here. Do not use shipping tape on that. And do not put regular coins on there. You got to put them in something, wrap them in paper first. Okay? Now, we're going to fold that over and then we're going to. Put a little piece on here, come sala, like that, and that's it. Now we're gonna stuck it in an envelope. We're gonna get in there. I hate these style envelopes. Okay. Now, that's in there, and that's done. Now, all right, before I do my next step, I'm going to put my address label. On there, see yeah. that? Avery, Avery labels got my name, address, all that good stuff on it. Then I'm gonna stuck up flower stamp on that side. All right, now I'm gonna use my shipping tape. Okay, now I'm gonna use that, but I do it a certain way. I'm going to show you all the trick to that. This is two inch tape. Two inch tape. Right. Do this. I'm going to put half of it right there. And then I'm going to fold it like that. Half. All right. I made it a little too long, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just cut it. Like that. All right. That's done. The two finny of Excel. Okay. I ain't going to make the next one that long. All right. Now, do that. Uh, I'm going to put it halfway right there. there. Turn this, I'm gonna fold it, boom, that's done. Alright, and I'm gonna put it here like that. Fold it. Guess what? I'm gonna do it again on this side. Very little tape. Not like Bill version number two used to do and tape the whole thing. Uh, you know, he used to put tape all over this thing. I mean, he'd wrap it. He'd wrap coins inside of a, a box, inside a, a cardboard inside of that, shipping tape like that all over. And I told him, Mr. Bill, please, please don't do that. <laughs> so he finally caught the idea. So anyway, there it is, ready to ship.
tape on top and what? The tape on the bottom right there. Now, the machine can't tear it up. The machine cannot tear it up no more. It never will. And let me pop myself down. All right, there we go. Now that's ready. That didn't even take five minutes. So, that's how you properly ship coins. And I could, look, on in the middle, I could have put uh, four two-by-two two flips. Pennies, nickels, quarters, dimes, whatever. And I could have folded the bottom and put four more quarters in flips. And then make my final fold, you know, with the top, take that. But, but, there's a catch to that. When, when that's extra weight, okay? That would cost an extra stamp, correct? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. All it is is an additional ounce. There's a 15 cent stamp with Uncle Sam on it. 15 cents for an additional ounce. That's all you got to put on it. If it weighs two ounces, your regular stamp and a 15 cent stamp. If it weighs three ounces, well, guess what? It takes two, two of these or one of these and two 15 cents. Either way. So that's my tip of the day. Hey, Doug Harding, what's going on, Mona Mate? Cujo, what's happening? Time for the edging tape. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's my little tip of the day. And uh, I want to pop in on two two different topics. That would be really good for um, giveaways, <clears throat> things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely mm -hmm. sticker trades. Um, yeah. Oh, like man. You know what? I forgot to put the sticker in there. I sure did. Watch this. Though. Watch this. Hey, I've done it before. Believe me. Watch this. I'm going to cut the edge of the envelope. Clean cut. Nah. I'm gonna stick it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> huh? uh -huh. Now, take me a little. Piece of tape. And do that, and guess what? We done. Well, Cajun, uh, I appreciate that tip. I uh, really do, sir. Um, I'll, I'll definitely get that tip over to my daughter because yeah, she does. But like you said, sticker trades, and yeah. Giveaways. Do that with stickers, and that's what reminded me. Oh man, I forgot the sticker. But and that's um, the main thing he wanted was a sticker. But I sent him a couple of coins. Uh, but I, I did want to come my in. Turn. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, boom, 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 boom. Mrs. I finally Bates got the new one. Stacker with it. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you caught it before I did. Mrs. Big Silver Stacker, and that is a beautiful lady from South Louisiana. Hey, Shia, love and like. Just wanted to show some love. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shia. How y'all are? 
Okay, now here's what I wanted to jump on earlier. Okay, and uh, somebody else brought it up. Happy Memorial Day. See, it is Monday right now, uh, just about everywhere except Hawaii. Okay. Right. Um, Cajun, uh, real quick, I have to go to bed. Um, okay, I'll, money. I'll see all you right. all. I'll see y'all. Uh, uh, I, I put the link in chat. Uh, appreciate it if y'all come join the Maniac family. We do a midweek flea market every Wednesday. I'd love to see y'all there. Uh, you can bring anything, tools, coins, video games, anything, and sell them. If you crochet and make things, if you're a uh, craft person you want to sell, hey, I'd love to see them, love to bring them. You come up on panel, sell them, or you can send them through. Yeah, uh, it's coming email. up Wednesday, right? I do it every Wednesday, just like Mama T does it every Sunday. Yeah. And You're gonna do it at what? Two, uh, two o'clock uh, Pacific. Two Pacific, Pacific, five Eastern. Yeah. So that's four o'clock Boudreaux time. Four o'clock Bayou time. Yeah. So well, I call Boudreaux time. Uh, anyway, yeah. but anyway, um, hope to see y'all there. Um, but until then, guys, um, I will be around YouTube here and there just to pop in to say hi. But. Good night, everybody. I hope that I was able to give some some of you some helpful information on certain coins tonight. Like I said, yeah, yeah. I put up my info, email, phone number. Yeah. Feel free right. to give me a call. Feel free to um, send me a email. I'm very easy to get a hold of. I'm not very hard at all. But uh, yeah, that's right. Boudreaux time. I call it Boudreaux time. I don't call yeah. it central anymore. It's Boudreaux time. He I'll, call call it, I'll call it Bayou time. Wow. I just type that in there. Yeah, Bayou yeah. time. <laughs> Boudreaux time. But uh, good night, everybody. Be safe. Happy Memorial Day to everybody. And uh, one more time, for those that don't know, uh, A.G. Price, rest in peace, sir. And, yeah, and uh, you will be missed. That's what I'm fixing to touch on right there, too. Mr. Uh -huh. A.G. Price passed away. Uh, let me see. Uh, today's Monday. Uh, yesterday was Sunday. So Saturday, A.G. Price passed away, sadly. So, uh, and uh, I, I got that information. I got the phone call. Put it that away. I got the phone call from Big T, and well, actually, I called him. He sent me an email and said, "Call me." And so I called him up, and he says, uh, "I need you to come in the panel with us, and all. Uh, I need, you know, some support, uh, you know." And I'm like, "Okay, what's going on?" He said, uh, "The general passed away yesterday, A.G. Price." I'm like. Oh, man, come on, really? You know, I mean, I didn't want to say, uh, come on, you joking with me? No, because nobody would joke about that, you know. So I, I, I didn't say that. And, but, you know, uh, A.G. Price was a very, very close friend of Big T Coins uh, and a few, and, Quite a few people in the coin community, and me also, for one. Uh, he was looking forward to coming down here for Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras, you know, uh, this past year. They couldn't make it. And, you know, it was expected. He, he was in uh, uh, not bad, bad health. But yeah, he was, you know, and, uh, we knew it was coming sooner or later, but uh, I was hoping more later than sooner uh, that it would happen. And his wife tried to get up in the panel. We had a, a two in two hour, 45 minute uh, live stream earlier. Uh, I, I think, yeah, that started at eight o'clock, you know, Sunday, uh, which we are Monday now. That started eight o'clock 
uh, Sunday. And uh, she, yeah, he got to, yeah, he was able to go to the Groves Coin Show this year. Yeah, that's right. And he did have that on his bucket list. He wanted to go there no matter what. He wanted to go there no matter what. You're right, Mrs. Big. You're right. And he did it. He went there. And he wanted to come down here. Uh, him and Miss Stacy wanted to come down here and put their feet under our table, you know, to eat some good food. It sadly to say it didn't happen. But Miss Stacy, uh, she would she tried to get up, you know, on the internet uh, in the in the panel in the live stream. So instead, she just called Big T on the telephone, and everything went perfect from there. And she was telling me, Cajun, you know, she told everybody, you know, we we all love y'all. AG loved everybody. You know, uh, uh, he enjoyed, you know, life, you know, in the coin community. And he and she told Big T, you know, y'all were like brothers. You know, she explained everything that he wanted everybody to here, you know, like he was, you know, he had told her, tell everybody, you know, you know, in his last week of his life, tell everybody, I love him, you know, tell Big T, tell this person, that person, and she told Big T that, and then she told me, you know, Cajun, yes ma'am, she said, uh, you know, he loved you to death. You know, you were part of the family. And, uh, you know, you know, it was on his bucket list to go down there, you know, to visit y'all. And, uh, yeah, I know we talked about, it. you know, we were trying to talk about good memories, you know, in the panel. We were, everybody was trying to say, trying to remember the good memories from back four and five years ago, we, you know, we're trying to, you know, uplift everything. And she said, Cajun, uh, he wanted to go down there for Mardi Gras, and, you know, she said, and I'm going to hold that promise up that he made to y'all that to, she says, I'm going to go down there, you know, to fulfill his bucket list. And I'm like, yes, please come down. You know, please, you're more than welcome. She said, can I bring my son and daughter, you know, along? I'm like, come on, bring them. We, hey, we got plenty of food for everybody. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Big, do you want to come up in the panel? You want to come up in the panel and join me? Night, Miss Marie. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you're telling that the money maniac. Okay. Uh, if you do, Mrs. Big, just let me know and. Uh, what about typical time? Yeah, that's right. Typical time. <laughs> swamp time. Yeah, they got uh Cujo, they got a lot of swamp time uh swamp areas though. They got swamps in uh North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, all that, you know. Take Stacy to Mamu. Yeah, Fred's Lounge. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Mamu is not but eight miles up the road from me. I I used to uh I used to live across the street from it. I'd go there and drink free uh, every Saturday. Not a problem. 
Okay. Uh, this is big. Do you have my email? Let me put it in here anyway. There we go. Okay, there's there's my email. Ms. Big. Send me an email and I'll reply to it. Uh, yeah, especially in Florida. Yeah. Swamps and marshes. Marshes also. Uh, because uh, a marsh is totally different than a swamp. Totally different. Especially down here in South Louisiana. Southeast and Southwest Louisiana, where Mrs. Big is from. Oh. I need to shave them two gray hairs I got off right there. Man, it's bothering me. Look at that. I need to get rid of them two gray hairs. Yeah, uh, in southeast, southwest Louisiana, we got uh, marshes all over. Uh, a swamp's totally different. Uh, uh, Marie, you know, uh, Marie is totally different than the mesh, you know, a marsh. A swamp's totally different. Swamp's got all in uh, trees, you know. Gum trees, cypress trees, and all that. Go. Uh, let me let it catch up. Let me let it catch up or let it muster. And, uh, there we go. There we go. Now, I just replied to that email. That'll work. Yeah, Cujo. Uh, marshes and swamps, two different beasts. In fact, we got the Chapalaya Basin down here in between uh, Hannison or Henderson. We call it Hannison. Hannison. And uh, Gros Tech, you know, uh, that thing, that swamp is uh, 25 miles wide in certain areas, sometimes 30 miles wide in certain areas, 300 miles long, and it goes straight up the middle of Louisiana, boom, like that. That's a huge swamp area. Actually, the Mississippi River used to go down the middle of it. Uh, a couple thousand years ago. And then it changed its course a few times. And and then in the late 1800s, they started levying the Mississippi River off so it couldn't move no more. No more, no more, no more. And then when the Mississippi River got too high and said, I want to get out of here, it busted some levees and caused a bunch of great floods. And if it wouldn't have been for the levees, hell, yeah, there wouldn't be no New Orleans, no nothing. Nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. A 
that's why the Delta, South Louisiana, is made like it is. Southeast Louisiana, I should say. That's why it's made like it is. Here and see what this is. Uh, if I say, don't want to talk to Nanny. Hey, Draco, you still here, brother? Draco Dragon, are you still here? I saw a TV about an old boat found at a field two miles from the river. Okay, uh, Miss Marie, where? I have a few stories too uh, about old ancient boats uh like the viking ships up in the mississippi river uh back in the 80s where when we had that big drought and all that uh the river got so low uh they uh, and the sandbars on part of the river they had the skeleton of a, uh, an ancient ship. It was a Viking ship that they found. That was back in uh, 1988, uh, 89, I want to say, because I remember it well. My uh, The company I was leased to with my truck, uh, we couldn't get any limestone in. Uh, on barges down the Mississippi River. Okay. You got a good connection now, Mrs. Big? Yes, sir. Um, I still have my YouTube open when I tried to get in. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even hear anything. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. I kept hearing you twice. It was like echo, 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 echo. <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, I I didn't even hear you, so much less an echo. <laughs> if the chat heard that, uh, I apologize. I'm very sorry about that. Oh, no biggie, no biggie, because uh, I didn't hear it, so they probably didn't hear it neither. How you doing, Shy? I'm doing good, Shy. Uh, como se va my tat? I don't speak it. I told you this, Cajun. I don't speak it. Unfortunately, I don't speak it. Oh, yeah. Well, you understand it a little bit, though. I do understand it. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's my time means this morning. You know, my time is morning, naturally. When my yeah. when, when my grandmother died, um, the whole family stopped speaking it, and it kind of just died. You know, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Uh, didn't you say you was from around uh, what, by Delores or something like that? Uh, yes, sir. I'm from below Homa. I'm from Delarge. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, like, but uh, I got uh, the guy uh, that sold me this house. He's from uh, by Delores, that area. What's his Ori Originally, uh, you know, he's from Terrio, which is owned by Delores. Anyway. Well, I'm from Terrio. Okay, well, yeah. The largest area is the same community. Right, right. But, you know, any, anywhere owned by you, the Lords, you know, uh, they, they say I'm from by the Lords. You know, it could be uh, north, south, or whatever, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, of Terrio, 
You know? It's only two miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's only two miles. <laughs> yeah. You... Uh, I, I don't know if I ever told you his name is uh, uh, Gene Collins. Gene Collins. I don't know yeah. any Collins. I don't know any. Yeah. Co oh, I do know some Collins. I do know some Collins. I don't know Gene Collins, but I do know some Collins. Gene and Nancy Collins. Oh, their daughter. Okay, now Gene, uh, he was born and raised in that house on by the Lord. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but his his yeah on by the Lord, but his daughter lived there, so he calls it his daughter's house instead of his house. And it was you know uh, about I don't know two foot off the ground or something. But when it would flood. Sometimes it would flood, you know, about every, I don't know, 10, 12 years, 10 or 20 years, it would, the water would go up in her house. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I don't know Gene and Nancy's daughter's name. I don't. Uh, but the daughter lived, now she lives <coughs> in Homa. Uh, Right next door to her mom and dad. She's married, got a couple of kids and all that. So, and uh, the house, uh, they were going to rent it out, but they didn't want to. And uh, I was, I never did ask Gene about it. You know, we call him Popo Gene. Uh, I was going to say, hey, man, how about rent me that house so I could have me a camp down there? That's right. You know? That's right. Yeah. You know, and I could put me a butterfly net on the on the buy, you know. So the house that my dad built. So uh, my mom and dad moved down there in 81. Or they moved down there in 79. They got married in 81. Uh -huh. And then uh, we lived in a mobile home until I was 10 years old. And then my daddy built a two-story house behind the mobile home. In Terrio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, okay. it's, on Dr. it's on Dr. Beatrice. It's not on the highway side. Mm -hmm. It's on Dr. Beatrice on the other side. <laughs> It's on the other yeah. side. <laughs> on the other side. On the other side of the bridge. Other side yeah, of the bay. On the other side of the bay. Uh, other side of the bay. You only got three directions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, north, south, and uh, across. West. Yeah. You got up the bay. You got down the bay, and cross yeah. the bay. <laughs> across the bay. That's right. And uh, it was a beautiful house, and um, and my dad passed away in August of fifteen. And there was just my mom there. All the kids were gone. And there was a huge house. And my dad built it by himself. Like he, it took him probably, mm -hmm. I think, two years to oh, build wow. it. Because he, he, he did everything by himself. He did all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the, people that, the people that bought it from my mom after my dad died, I told them, I said, here's my number. When and if you ever get ready to sell, please, 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 please contact me first. Right. I I, I want that. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I want my dad's house back, you know, like, and I couldn't, I wasn't in the position at the time to buy it. Or, or, or to finish even paying off the mortgage on it. But I am now. So, yeah. I told them, please contact me. Oh, uh, Marie said it was an old Civil War uh, boat. Era boat that she was talking about they found uh, on PBS. It was a documentary made on PBS. Uh, when the Mississippi River went dry, and uh, Miss Marie said it, uh, uh, that, and 
I knew uh, of a Viking ship that they found when the Mississippi got river got that below. And then she's talking about a documentary that was made on a, a Civil War boat. Oh, oh yeah, I, I believe that. They had uh, the uh, Union boats come up the Vermilion River from Vermilion Bay, the Gulf and Vermilion Bay, up toward Abbeville, uh, you know, in a coastal city and all that. Uh, and there was an old lady that had a house and they had cannon in her old house. Uh, she showed everybody when the news media got there and all that, when they found out it was in the historical place, they had cannonball holes underneath the new, the new siding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the, what they did, they uh, they were replacing, uh, they were remodeling the inside uh, of the house. And that's where they saw the old cannonball holes at, from the Union boats. It, it, it didn't matter, though. The Union didn't get that far up the river. Uh, the Cajuns stopped that real quick. You know, you don't mess with a Cajun. No, uh -uh. no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> you know, don't do that. No. I don't know. Um, I don't know much about that. My dad's from Florida and my mom's from Mississippi. So I. Oh, oh where yeah. your grandpa was from, by Dolores? Uh-uh. Uh, grandpa was from Florida. Oh, okay. Well, you said your grandma talked French? My mom's mom. Yeah. Oh, your mom's. Oh, okay. All right. Well, but, but where your mom's mom was from? She was from Mississippi. Oh, but she talked French. She did. Okay. Yeah. 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 She was the old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of French influence. That was in uh, Alabama and Mississippi and Louisiana. That, and they had to how, hide. They had to hide. How, yeah, that's how Alabama and Mississippi has all those French names down there. Like Gothe. Yep. You know, they say Goche. Hey, how, how, how you get Goche out of G-A-U-T-H? <laughs> No, and then they call it, uh, you know, and then it's Iberville, Iber that little town of Iberville, uh, uh, by uh, Biloxi, you know, over there, Gulfport, in between Gulfport and Biloxi, they, they say Iberville. Like, how you get Iberville out of it? You don't know, the guy's name was Iberville. Yeah. <laughs> Got Iberville Parish in Louisiana, you know? And then uh, Iberville, stat his statue, the explorer, is over there in Texas in Indianola. Indianola, Texas, you know, on the Gulf Coast. So that I did not know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of French explorers uh, down there, and that's... That's how they say that uh, Mobile had the first ever Mardi Gras, you know, the original Mardi Gras in Mobile, Alabama. That's but they they say New Orleans made it. They had the first Mardi Gras, but New Orleans made it popular. Boo butter. <laughs> well, so the story that was passed on to me was the first Mardi Gras. Um, Men went around on horseback to different houses and collecting um, small amounts of money to feed everyone. Or meat, meat, a chicken. Or, or yep. Uh, yeah, uh, bacon or w whatever to put in the gumbo. That's the chicken runs, they call that. that, that that's called the coude de madigra. Yeah. That's what that's about. Yeah. Uh, 
but the first ever Mardi Gras that is on record was uh, celebrated at the mouth of the Mississippi River uh, in a boat, in a boat. Uh, the French explorers, now Mardi Gras, uh, you know, that's a Catholic thing, Catholic religion thing. And it is. Uh, every, everybody said, you know, and this is going to debunk the Mobile, Alabama. The, uh, all the original Mardi Gras happened in Mobile, Alabama. Well, no, it did. Uh, back in Europe and in Nova Scotia, you, you know, France, France, okay, and Poitou, you know, all, or all of France, but all of the French people that went to Nova Scotia and colonized. Nova Scotia and Canada were from Poitou, France. And that's a known fact. You know, that they, they have records of that, of the, the family names that traveled on ships to colonize uh, North America. And they went to Nova Scotia, which is uh, French for New Scotland. You know, but you know, it was all French people. But anyhow, beside the point, uh, uh, in France, they celebrated Mardi Gras all the time, you know? So it didn't originate in Mobile, Alabama, no. <laughs> yeah, Marie Henson said, France still has a big celebration, correct. Correct. Okay, Cujo said, you know, we got salt marshes around here, and of course, uh, the Everglades swamps, uh, super different from each other. Yeah, that's right, Cujo. That's right. We got saltwater marshes uh, down here in southwest Louisiana. And in southeast Louisiana, where Mrs. Big is from, lives, and uh, and freshwater marshes. Uh, I can go in south southwest Louisiana, and I can catch freshwater fish, and I can catch saltwater fish in the same body of water. I can catch bass, sockele. And I can catch redfish uh, or speckled trout in the same body of water, yep. same river, same lake. Yeah. But the speckled trout and the redfish, they are uh, uh, they adapt to the the more brackish waters. Brackish, and, yeah. And, and the freshest, the more fresher water. Uh, the redfish and the speckled trout, but bass and sockele, they don't take the salt water that good. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they'll move back up north to the fresh water. As soon they as die. They taste the salt. Right. Yeah. They die whenever hurricanes come through because hurricanes make the fresh water brackish. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll, yeah. they'll they'll die if too much of the Gulf comes in. So. Like literally, if you walk out the back door of my house, you could walk 20 steps and you could fish for bass and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could launch you could launch the boat right there in the bayou and you'd you'd be in the Gulf in probably 15, 20 minutes where you could catch the drum and the redfish and right. Right. when that hurricane comes up. And it pushes all that salt water up. Those bass can't live in that. They they die. And well, it actually moves them up more north too. You know, you well, know they, with that tidal they, surge. They, they they don't have anywhere to go uh, because uh, by the large, it was so dry that it never actually reached the intercoastal. So they would have to swim south and, and go across the Dulac to go up to the intercoastal. Mm -hmm. Hey, Corn Captain, how you doing, Mona Mate? 
How you been, buddy? I hadn't seen you in a little while. Okay, hey, excuse me for a little bit. I gotta go lean off the dock. I gotta go lean off the dock. The first yeah. time I heard him say that, I was like, I know what that means. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You you would know what that means. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> All right, y'all. He's leaving me here. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I can't see the chat on this side, unfortunately. All right, y'all want to hear a joke? <laughs> what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? Does anyone know? I got to show off the radio station t-shirt. Hell yeah. William, what's up, Mona Me? What's going on? Or in Texas, uh, it's see a man about a horse. Oh, actually. Oh, coin counting. A stick. Then that's going to be hard to speak. What? A stick. What stick? <clears throat> so you left me here with all these amazing people. So I told oh. him a joke. I said, what do, oh. you call a, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. A stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A piece of wood, a stick, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I, I was wondering, like, a stick. I'm like, okay, uh, I, I, I missed something there. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Murray Henson was saying how you say you're going to go laying off a dock. Yeah, Murray Henson man. said in Texas, it's see a man about a <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh <laughs> That means a different thing down here. We say, <laughs> we say, see a man about a dog, you know, to go lean off the dock. Now, <laughs> if I want to hang off the dock, you know, for about three or four or five minutes, that's to see a, a man about a horse. <laughs> <laughs> William, you get oh, you getting ready for work? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It's uh, damn, it's uh, uh, almost four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, uh, and uh, cut uh, in the morning. Cut uh, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, he's always five o'clock his time. I think. That you going to work? Tomorrow on a uh, Memorial Day, a holiday? Dang. What kind of company are you working for? Man, I'm, uh, 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 no, no, man, look. I, I, I'm a patriot. No, I, uh, look, there ain't no big, big companies. Well, it depends on if it's a utility service or something, electrical plant and all that. Yeah.
then, you know, that's a 24-hour, 7-day, 365 operation, you know. But uh, local stores, convenience stores, yeah, they're going to be open, but they're going to be flying the flag, you know. Yep. Yeah. You know, because everybody's going to run out of beer or whatever, <laughs> and they're going to be open. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got beer, baby. No problem. Yeah, come on over. Yeah, yeah hospital stuff like that. But damn, like, a, yeah, just a regular manufacturing company like William works for, uh, they don't need to open up a memorial. You know, that their services are not needed that much. I know who he works for. I know what he does. Put it that way. Um, I fortunately do not have to work tomorrow. Huh? I said, I fortunately do not have to work tomorrow. I am off. Oh, today. you don't have to work. I don't. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay. Well, that'll work. You know, you got the day off. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this name. Travis Woods. You know any Woods over there? The last name of the family is Wood. Um, in Louisiana, I did not, but here in Texas, no. I do. No, I'm talking about. Wait, what now? I said in Louisiana, I never met any Woods, but over here in Texas, I I know last name Wood. Oh, okay, but but you're still in Dolores, right? Uh, no, sir. I I live right on the outskirts of Houston. Oh, I thought you were still in by Dolores. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, like I said, the guy I bought my house from, and I don't know if I ever finished it, uh, is from uh, Terrio. His name's Travis. His mama, his mama uh, and daddy were from there, and then they moved over here, and Travis, uh, well, let's see them. No. Uh, I don't know why he moved over here later, but uh, he was a tugboat pilot captain, and uh, he was raised down there and by the Lord. In fact, he makes his own p rogues. He, he builds his own. He builds his own p rogues. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And from memory, from memory, he doesn't have a. You know, plans with measurements and all that. He just, he just builds it. That's it. And they are nice and light, too. Lightweight. Marie said, where you at in Texas? I'm north of Dallas. Oh, she's on the outside of Houston. <coughs> Yeah, I'm on the um, north side of Houston. I'm on the outskirts. I'm not in the city. I'm nowhere near the city. Well, you're on Tom Ball or something? I'm, I'm very close to Tom Ball, yes, sir. Okay, yeah, yeah. My, my daughter used to live in Tom Ball. Mm hmm. I'd like to be more on the outskirts because it's just. It keeps building. <laughs> Every day there's a whole another subdivision going up. It just keeps building. And yeah, yeah. Sleep times, yeah. Where everybody works in, in Houston or the outer part of Houston, and then they go to their house on the outside of town to sleep and uh, whatever, and land's cheap. Hey there, what's going on? Mona me, good morning. Bon matin, bon matin. Right, get that. Hi, 
Like, Nader, check your email, brother. Check your email. You want one of them stickers and one of those pennies, Ms. Dick? Sir? You want one of them stickers and a penny? One of them Wheaties? One of, your, Wheaties. one of your stickers? Of course. Yeah, all right. Well, just uh, put that in the email. Uh, your address and email, and I'll, I'll send you a sticker and one of those... Uh, uh, like Big T says, we it is in an envelope. <laughs> what what the heck what what the hell? Mater. You have to E R with Crystal. Oh big prayers, big prayers. And it's her? What the heck's going on? What's up with Miss Crystal? That's my sister's name. Big prayers. Yeah, I hope she's okay. Uh, man, that, look, that, that dog don't need no more bad news. I just seen the title of this is called How to Properly Ship Coins in an Envelope. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I showed how to do it earlier at the 45 minute mark. <laughs> Money Maniacs came up and, you know, we were talking about something else, you know, and so it went on and on. But it, it don't matter. I'll uh, edit the video. Uh, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I was. Okay, oh, okay. She probably got sunburned like a ball of crawfish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, they went uh, motorcycle ride and probably uh, sunburn, wind burn. You know. Uh, I've had wind burn that was a lot worse than sunburn. We used to go bike riding, you know, motorcycle riding uh, in the woods with no sun. I'm talking about in the woods. And I'd be wearing short pants. I was a teenager at the time. I don't know, 15 years old. And wearing shorts and no shirt. And I'd be red, red, red like a ball crawfish. And uh, the sun wasn't, uh, you know, coming through the trees. It was a wind burn. It's swollen. Her arms swollen and hurting inside. Probably from holding on to you too tight like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make I'm trying to make a joke, Mater. Okay. <laughs> did, she, did she get bit by something? Huh? Did, I wonder if she got bit by something. Oh no! Well, not on a not on a triglide Harley Davidson. Well, maybe a wasp might have got her, or a hornet, maybe, or you know, while you right while you're on the back of the. Holly Davidson, maybe a, a hornet bit or something, but I have no idea. Marie Henson said, Noxzema cream works good for that. Yeah, but uh, uh, in the ER, I don't know if they're going to put Noxzema on there or not. In the emergency room. Yeah. yeah, sunburn, yeah, sunburn and windburn. And Mater, he he showed up, he showed up in the live stream uh, I was on earlier, and his arms from his t-shirt down to his hands were redder than a ball crawfish. 
It's true. He said it wasn't yeah. hurting until we went to bed several after several hours after until we got after we got home. Uh, you know, and I was making a joke in that live stream I was just talking about. I was like, well, wait till Mater gets in the bed between the sheets <laughs> and uh, that sunburn he got, you know, uh, wait till he gets in the bed and them sheets and all that. Uh, Touching uh, his skin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Vinegar and water. Yeah. yeah. I was making a joke about it. Uh, about Mater getting that burn, you know, but now it, you know, it's uh, Miss Crystal doing that, you know, uh, with the sunburn. Oh man, Mater, look, Lord have mercy. I know how she feels. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coon ass big time, grand ton. <laughs> and, and, but I've had, and I've I got a natural tan, but every now and then, at the start of the summers, I get too much sun at one time. And let me tell you something, that stuff burns, burns, and you can ask Missy. Me and her, uh, after we got through with watermelon season down here one time. We went to Kakashu River to the west of us. We went to the Kakashu River, the white sandy beaches, you know, and all that. You know how them white sandy beaches are, reflects the sunlight on you and all that? I had my 10 by 10 canopy up, shade tent canopy thing, and I was trying to get me some sun on my legs. I had some shorts on with them. Uh, some sandals, you know, some like the old, we used to call them harachis years ago. And, and I had some, uh, I was putting some mineral oil on, on my legs, like some suntan lotion. But it was mineral oil, like Hawaiian Tropic. And let me tell you something. That night, uh, I was crying like a baby. At 10 o'clock at night, I was crying like a baby. I was way worse than Mater was. Man. I put on uh, sunburn lotion during the stream. Yeah, but you got to put that on before you even get in the sun. Oh, man. Yeah, vinegar will draw out the heat. Vinegar and water. Yeah. That's what the doctors do. But man, I was crying like a baby. I was. Oh, man. I'm like, I'll never do that again. Guess what? I did. <laughs> Made her say, hush that, hush your mouth, Cajun. You know I want to go on another cruise to the Caribbean. Well, if you go this year, you'll have a suntan for it. That's for sure. You're gonna peel first, but you'll have a suntan after you peel. And my seagull keeps going out. Everybody thinks I smoke a lot. I don't. My cigars keep going out on me all the time. And I got to relight every five minutes. Marie says, in Florida, in the Florida Keys, yeah, you got to use lotion and only lay out for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You got, man, that's a lot of salt water uh, in the Keys. And then if you're on the, the east coast of Florida, on the Atlantic coast side of Florida, that Atlantic Ocean is way more saltier than the Gulf Coast of Florida, you know, on the west side of Florida. And the, the Atlantic Ocean has a lot more salt in it than the Gulf does. 
Well, in that area, I think it's all about the same. But it ain't like Holly Beach down here or Grand Isle, put it that way. Grand Isle, it'll take you six hours to get sunburnt. If you're in Jacksonville, Florida, on the Atlantic Coast Beach in Jacksonville, uh, in 20 minutes, you'll be cooked, uh, cooked big time. Then the Key West on the cruise out of Galveston. Okay. Yeah, we used Marie. We used to use Noxzema, uh when I was younger. I don't even know if they make Noxzema no more. I hadn't heard that word uh, name in a long time, but I know Mama used to put that on us uh, when we get a sunburn. <clears throat> I still think they make like the um. What do you call it? Like the like the little rounds, like in the in the jar, in the in the where you could like pick one out. Noxzema. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Noxzema jars were about uh, that big around, about that tall. Yeah. Had the the lid you popped off. You know, it was a half a twist, and it was that white cream. And well, it was cold. And you put that on a sunburn and it was cold, 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 cold. It's very cold. Yeah. I yeah, don't know a, if they make a, that. A blue anymore. jar. A blue jar, correct. But they make the pads. It's right. the same jar. It's oh. the same exact jar. But instead of the cream or the paste. Uh -huh. It's like these little pads that are um, saturated in the liquid. Oh, hmm. okay. If that makes any, if that makes sense, yeah. You know, I think it's, um, I think it's for just your face, but. I know uh, my mom used to uh, put Noxzema on her face, you know, all the time. You know, smooth skin, you know, mm -hmm. keep her skin smooth and all that. <clears throat> yeah, and it was blue jars, correct, yeah. I didn't use it because it burnt. I thought it burned. If I put it on my skin, it was okay, but if I put it on my face... It burned, and it made me real red, 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 red. What? For a sunburn or just regular, normal, whatever? Just regular, normal. If I tried to clean my face with Noxzema, oh, mm. it burns. It burns so bad. Oh, wow. Mm. And so, like, I never used it, but um, I used to go sleep at my girlfriend April's house when I was a kid, and that's what she cleaned her face with. So I would try and use it. Oh man, it made my face look like a cherry. It made my face like red, 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 red. Oh wow, hmm, that's odd. Pond's cold cream, Marie said, or Pond's cold cream. I'm, I remember Pond's Cold Cream from a long time ago. They used to advertise that on TV, uh, on the soap operas, years and years ago. These are the days of our lives. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. Now, now I'm giving away uh, my age. <laughs> I used to watch that with my grandma. 
Uh, I'll tell you what, there wasn't a shrimper in the Gulf of Mexico that did not have General Hospital on when Luke and Laura was on there. This is back in uh, 1980, the early 80s, okay? General Hospital, Luke and Laura. And uh, that's when Laura had got kidnapped. And Luke was trying to find her. She was on some island somewhere, Dr. Morrow or something. I forget the doctor's name that kidnapped Laura. And every shrimper in the Gulf had the decks, the, the back deck of their few double rigger shrimp boats cleaned off you know all the shrimp were in the ice hole and then we drove for four hours and and we were watching luke and laura on general hospital and i tell you what you can miss a whole two weeks of it uh that if you miss two weeks of it the, the next day uh you were just about where they left <laughs> off at <laughs> I remember watching their wedding. Wait, I remember watching with my mom. Yeah, uh, their wedding. Yeah, there you go. When they uh, got married. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that back then when the soap operas were, you know, uh, pretty good. There was two of them that were all uh, good. Uh, it was, uh, one of them was uh, Victor, Victor, uh, I was telling Johnny about that the other day. We was talking about it. Victor Newman. Victor Newman. I think that was on Young and the Restless. Victor Newman. Him and Cricket. Cricket was one of the young girls. She grew up in the uh, soap operas actually she was a young girl oh, all my children okay there you go all my children okay i thought it was a young and arrested and uh cricket she started off as a young girl in the soap operas and she grew up to be an adult still acting in the soap operas oh i young thought victor was young and restless yeah that's what i'm talking about young and restless uh, mm -hmm. with, with cricket, you know, cricket, no. And then Marie said, All my children, she might have been talking about something else, but yeah, I, I, I thought it was, yeah, okay, she, yeah, all right, she said, Yeah, it is Young and the Restless, okay, I thought so. My mama would watch, uh, Young and the Restless, General Hospital, uh, and all my children. And uh, if she stayed up a little late, <laughs> uh, well, late for her was three o'clock. My mom was a nurse for 35 years. She worked 11 to seven shift, the graveyard shift, 11 at night to seven in the morning. She was in charge of the second floor of Abbeville General Hospital. And uh, she'd watch uh, General Hospital, uh, she watched As the World Turns, Search for the Mar, you know, a bunch of them. Sometimes the guiding light. I don't think that's on anymore. I, I remember all those old soap operas from back in the 70s, early 70s. William said, I remember Luke and Laura real well, yeah. That, that was the most famous soap opera ever, Luke and Laura. Uh, General Hospital because they had such a fantastic story, you know, storyline on that. Uh oh. Uh, she lost connection. Okay.
One life to live. Yep. Remember that? One life to live. Sure enough. Hey, Cajun, what about Matt? Oh, yeah, man. I, I, I think I have seen every episode of Matt. Every episode. I might have not watched one or two of them, but I'm pretty sure I watched every episode. I used to watch that with my dad, and I didn't know when to laugh unless my dad was laughing. So when my dad would laugh, I would laugh too. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you must... Uh, what, like when Hawkeye or something would make a joke or pull a prank? Right. I was too oh. young to um, understand it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. But I would watch it with my dad, and I would look up at him, and I'd look at the TV, and I'd look up at him, and I'd look at the TV, and I would wait for him to laugh. And oh, when he okay. would laugh, I would laugh. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, I've seen a few episodes, um, I, I guess, like, uh, probably when I was in college, and it was funny. That was a good show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mass was awesome. Uh, the last episode lasted two hours. The last episode was two hours long. What year? What year was the last episode? I don't even know. Uh, 1970, wait, wait, was it 70 or 80, early 80, maybe, early 80s, I don't know, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember, I remember watching it, Miss Marie said I have the whole box set of masks on DVD, yeah, 79 or 80, Marie said. That's okay. so cool, Marie. That mm -hmm. is so cool. 83, Mater said, maybe. He said, maybe. You know, I can look it up real quick. If the last episode was in 83, that means I was watching reruns. <laughs> Nineteen eighty-three, February twenty-eighth, nineteen eighty-three. I, th I thought it was the early eighties. I'll tell you what, that was uh, uh, that it was uh, uh it, it didn't start out as uh, you know, sad or whatever. It started out as, you know, comical and stuff like that. Then it got down uh, to the real true life stuff. And then it got to the sad part, you know, at the end where everybody's saying bye and all that stuff. So. Oh, yeah, there's certain channels that still play it. I think TV Land. Uh, still plays it. Uh, you know, well, some of them cable channels still play it. When I was in the hospital uh, last year for that whole month, uh, I would watch MASH at, uh, I think it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I think. I, I would watch uh, episodes of MASH. Oh, Clinger. Yeah, Clinger. <laughs> oh, yeah, Clinger and his dresses. Yeah, uh, Marie says, yeah, me, me TV. Yeah. There was two of them, Mater. There was two of them. 
Radar was one of them. And uh, uh, I forget the other one. Uh, that played in the, uh, and Father Mulcahy. Oh, uh, no, I don't, uh, that didn't ring a bell. I know Radar was in the movie, and Gary Berghoff, Radar, and then, uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was BJ, man, Honeycutt. DJ, I forgot. I forgot the other one. There were two of them, if I'm not mistaken, Mayor. One of them was Radar. There was a couple of spinoffs of the match. BJ came after Wayne. After Wayne left the show. BJ. Uh, Wayne. Okay. Uh, there was BJ. Then there was. Because uh, he wanted to know BJ's real name. And he said, that's my name, BJ. BJ. And Hawkeye would say, is that on your birth certificate? And Hawkeye was trying to find out BJ's real name. So, BJ, uh, I forget the other guy that Gary played radar in the movie and series. Yeah, all of the actors in the series were new, Mater said. Okay. Wayne, uh, Wayne, Wayne, I, I, I forget Wayne's uh, name, uh, last name. Uh, Wayne, uh, and I forget the character's name too. Uh, I think Farrell, Farrell was BJ's name, I think. Farrell, something Farrell. You know, I'll just look it up. Uh, okay, cast. And they played for 11 years. Okay. Mike Farrell was BJ. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, it's not. Oh, show sure, more. Okay. Uh, Wayne Rogers, yeah, Trapper John, yeah, Trapper, Trapper, yeah, and that's the one, and I was fixing to mention his name, there was a spinoff of MASH called uh, Trapper John MD, after MASH ended, there was a spinoff of Trapper John MD, and he was a, a doctor in Vietnam, and he lived in a camper trailer, uh, in the hospital parking lot, and he was a surgeon, a doctor, surgeon, and then you know, he was real close to the hospital. You know, Proper John M.D. It wasn't the same guy, though. It wasn't the same guy. Donald Sutherland and Elliot Gould were in the movie. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Let me see who is, because I, I thought there were two characters in, in the movie that went on uh, in the series.
is the only Gary. Yeah, radar was the only one. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's where I'm getting this at. Yeah. Okay. Two other actors appeared in the movie and the series. Well, series. Okay. General Hammond. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But they wasn't regular. Yeah. General Hammond was one of them. But he only played in a couple of the episodes. He wasn't a regular in the series. <clears throat> Pernell Roberts plays Trapper John. That was a different Trapper John, I think. The one I'm thinking about was a younger guy. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Trapper John, MD. Pernell Roberts. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Gregory Harrison. Man, I thought there was another medical show. There was another medical show. Pernell Roberts did play Trapper John, yeah. But I'm trying to think of the one that... Uh, that no, no, Wayne Rogers played it in MASH. Yeah, no, I'm talking about Trapper John in the, in the movie, in the, uh, the sitcom, Trapper John, M.D. In 1979, there was a TV sitcom, a series, uh, that played once a week. And Pernell Roberts played Trapper John. Uh, Trapper John, uh, what was his name? Uh, Trapper John, uh, Pernell Rock. He played in Bonanza too. Uh, uh, Trapper John, uh, I dog it. I'm trying to get his character name. And I don't see it. Uh, let me go right here. Trapper John, whatever. Uh, something. Uh, do, do you know how he got that name? <laughs> Trapper John or Pernell mm -hmm. Roberts? <laughs> Trapper, Trapper John. Oh, uh, it was Trapper John McIntyre. McIntyre, yeah. 1979 to 1986 is when they made that uh, medical show sitcom. How did he get his name? Well, I don't know. This might be real life. <clears throat> it says his nickname comes from an incident in which he was caught having... <clears throat> with a woman <laughs> in a laboratory aboard a Boston and Maine railway train and she claimed in her defense <laughs> he trapped me. <laughs> I guess that's how he got Trapper John. Okay, he, okay, a woman said he did what? So, <clears throat> it says, um, and the spinoff, Trapper John MD series played by Pernell Roberts. He's one of the main characters in the MASH TV series during the first three seasons and the central character of the later series. His nickname comes from an incident in which he was caught <clears throat> with a woman aboard a Boston and Maine railway train and she claimed in her defense that he trapped me. Wait, he was caught boarding? Boarding like all aboard? or No. 
<laughs> he was caught doing the hanky pinky. Mm, okay. It says in the book and the film, Chapter John is a graduate of Dormouth College, having played quarterback on the school's football team and serves as a surgeon of the 4077th. In the film, he has a dry, I don't know that word, sense of humor. While in the MASH TV series, he's more of a class clown. Chapper spends much of his time on the series engaging in mischief with Hawkeye Pierce, with two playing practical jokes on Major Frank and Burns and Hot Lips, drinking and trying to <clears throat> women. While Trapper expresses great love for his wife and daughters, he also fraternizes with nurses a great deal with no pretense of fidelity. Judging by his full name, he comes from a Catholic family. In the film, Hawkeye and Trapper are given roughly equal focus, but in the TV series, the character devolved to become more of a sidekick to the character Hawkeye. This frustrated Rogers. And in combination with dispute over the terms of the original five-year contract, he quit the show shortly before production of the fourth season began. The character of Trapper was abruptly discharged from the Army and sent back to the United States. The character of B.J. Honeycutt was created to replace him. With the two-part season, with the two-part season four opener created to explain his absence, the third episode introducing Colonel Potter was intended to be the premiere episode. I don't really know what any of that means. Uh, episodes, yeah, you know the later shows. What's up, 17? What's happening, brother? I'll have to look that up and then see what you... Hey, Steel Wool Queen, how you doing again? Cajun stopping by on my way to bed. Okay. Diabolical 58, what's going on? He was talking one-eyed Willie to the op optometrist. Okay, okay, yeah, but yeah, okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, I get it, but I'm not getting with that. Uh, the thing was about on. Um, on a, the show or something or whatever. But, yeah, that was not good. I, ho I hope that's not real life. I hope that's. No, I think that was, uh, you, talk, you know, some shows or something, or that's why he got kicked off or something. Still, Will Queen, me and Missy are good. And, uh, Gabby's good. You know, she was hamming up the camera earlier, you know. You know, in the live streams, you know, with me right here and all that. So, yeah, still working 17. It's been a lot of seconds ago. I have you been? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And, uh, and then my granddaughter found out about what I was doing. Uh, with my overall bibs on uh, Thursday night. She said, Papa, I want to see you do that. You know, uh, you know, do your water boy thing, you know, and all that. You know, <laughs> Diabolical said, Boo, it's almost five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I know. My wife, your number two, keeping me up all night, still will clean. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't make a joke, but I don't think I will. <laughs> anyway, 
yeah, it is almost uh, five o'clock. It was twenty till. I'm gonna have to edit the the video. Not no, not the live stream part of it, but edit the title uh, or the description. You know, if y'all want to actually see how to properly ship an uh, envelope, you know, go to the forty-five minute mark. You know, and uh, and that way you see how to properly ship coins and stuff in an envelope. <laughs> tape it up right. You know, and don't do like Bill J. Version Two and some other people that a lot of other people know. You know, where they tape coins to a piece of cardboard and they put that in an envelope and they put tape, shipping tape all around it. And you got to cut it open with a hacksaw, you know. Yeah. That's how I ship my stuff. So much tape, all the tape, the whole roll, all of it. No, yeah, yeah. Well, now you know how to do it the right way. <laughs> now you gotta, now you know how to do it the right way. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Mrs. Big, uh, if you want that, uh, you know, uh, sticker and uh, one of them weedies, uh. Just, you know, reply to the email, you know, that on the link thing, and uh, I'll get that out to you. Yes, sir. I'd like to have your stickers. Huh? I said I'd love to have your sticker. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got uh, a few left. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you one, no problem. And a, one of them weedies, like Big T says, weedy. And uh, I, I don't know, uh, might, might find an extra sticker from a, a double from another channel, coin channel, and throw in there. Yeah, but still, World Queen, uh, I just made that new video. Uh, Tonight, well, live stream because uh, I did it totally different than I did in my old video on on my other channel. Still, wool coins that start outsourcing. <laughs> start outsourcing, yeah. That's funny. Okay, at the 45 minute mark, still will clean. The 45 minute mark, uh, 42, 43, something like that. You know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wave an envelope around or something like that, you know. <clears throat> it take five minutes to do it, if that. Since I had, you know, I had to sit, you know, put the camera down and all that and everything and boom. Then I forgot to put the sticker in the envelope, you know, with the coins, you know. So I had to cut the envelope open on one end, just nice and neat. I slid the sticker right in there. Then I just took out a piece of tape, folded it in half, boom, right on it. You know, some of that... uh some of that stuff like that right there that that you don't tape coins to cardboard with you just do the outside edge of an envelope with it it's two inch tape you know it's a no brainer two inch tape take out a piece that long not quite the length of the envelope but half of it on one side of the envelope, flip it over, fold the tape over, stick it to the other side. Done. So seven. Getting the sticker is that how we uh, do it right? No, that's not how we do it right. I did it wrong, but I made it right. 
Must have been that wrong place at the right time. Yeah, Dr. John, baby. <laughs> the New Orleans man, Mac Reckenback, Dr. John. I was in the wrong place at the right time. 710 old brings up a good point. <clears throat> he says, don't tape over the stamp like I did. So um, I also learned that the hard way. You can't tape over the stamp because when you bring it in, they want to stamp it. They want to put their stamp on it. Booba. Booba. <laughs> I did it. I did it a thousand times. Tape over the stamp. <clears throat> if you tape over the stamp, then they can't press their stamp on it with like the date and everything. So they make you um, redo it. You can't. You can't do it. Bull butter. He said bull butter. <laughs> Bullshit. See that little mark down there in the bottom of that envelope? When it goes through the sorting machine, it recognizes the stamp, and that gets coded on it. I've done it a thousand times. Seven ten ought to know that. I put tape over stamps a million to a, a, a thousand times, not a million times. Okay, look, there it is. The tape's over the stamp. It's an imaging thing. It's an image processor. It does it all the time. It recognizes the stamp. And they don't send it back? No, not. I've never got an envelope back. Never. So here, um, if you tape over the stamp, that's not going to fly. That's not, that's not going to be okay here. I don't know what the difference is between uh, the Baton Rouge hub and the Houston hub, you know, or Dallas hub. Um, because they have that press stamp. I don't, I forgive me, I don't know what it's called. But they have the press stamp that it slides through. And if there's tape on it, you can't press stamp it on on the on the stamp that you put on the envelope they can't press stamp it over tape now are you talking about the postmark thing oh that's it yes sir yes sir that's yeah, it. The, po the postmark thing like uh uh let me see if it's on that uh, no it won't be on that because that's well anyway this is first class pre-sorted you know, postage paid, you know, it's just printed on the envelope, you know, first class. Uh, let me see if I can find another envelope with something on it. Uh, that's going to be a pre-sorted mail thing, uh, like this one. Uh, yeah, pre-sorted standard. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Is that pre-sorted? Oh, what? Nope, that's first class. This one here is pre-sorted. They don't have a, you know, a stamp on it. But, you know, it's not a hand stamp, neither, you know. And that's what I was talking about in the video earlier about that. You know, like spam mail or, you know, like advertisement and stuff like that. If I, I got any regular old junk mail or not uh, over here. I usually throw all that crap away. Uh, when I see pre-sorted on it, I tear it up and I chop it, file 13 it, throw it in the trash can. No, I don't see none right quick over here. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Hey, Mater, you're back. Yeah, back at the house. Okay, how long you been in the basement? I mean, in the wine cellar? Uh, about a minute. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. we just got home a little while ago. 
They okay. gave her well, a um, pain meditation and a little muscle relaxer. Oh. So they okay. don't know what's going on. All I know is that she was saying it was hurting the right arm from like the elbow down to the wrist. Well, I, I guess so. She was burnt yeah. uh, redder than a ball crawfish. No, it wasn't because of the sunburn. I mean, I'm hurting because of the sunburn. Hers, it was all inside, just moving the arm. The pain. Yeah. All right. Well, guess, what, uh, they were thinking it was, you know, maybe some like some tendonitis going on. Oh, from holding on too tight or something? Could be. I mean, it's been a while since we've actually been up on the bike. I mean, we did. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's just say we left at about 10 o'clock this morning. And right. all the riding and everything, we didn't get back home till after 5. Yeah. So that's uh just say six hours on the bike, you know, between you know, seven hours total, but six hours actually on the bike. No, nah, it was probably maybe five. Five, okay. About four and a half, five hours. What's up, Steel Wool? But no, we were um I'm going to head it over to Red Oak for a meetup. And then uh, from there, left out to uh, Rio Vista. And then from there, headed down to uh, Cranswell Gap. Okay. Oh, yeah. Miss Crystal, Miss Crystal just commented, I held on with my legs more than my arms, and they're fine. My arms are from the inside muscle and everything. Uh, well, did, did she get a little red on her arms, sunburn or she's anything? A, she's a little bit lobster. Maybe she might be crawfish, but not lobster. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I, I want to say it's probably, uh, uh, you know, like, Maybe something tense, you know, tense from mm. from the ride or something. Could be. I don't know. All I know is that, you know, she woke up and was like, okay, we're going to the hospital. Okay. I don't know. Uh, Miss Marie, are you leaving? Okay. If right. you are, good night. I don't know if you're telling. Uh, okay. Still will queen say it. All right. Night, everyone. All right, Star Wars Queen. Take it easy. What's up, 710? Yeah, 710's in the house. I think I missed another couple of comments. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm only out here long enough for one cigarette, and that's it. But I just want to pop in and let you know what was going on. Um... Yeah, well, they appreciate it. That works. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there comes, you know, let the uh, uh, YouTube uh, vampire know what's going on. Uh, yeah, vampire. Yeah, don't listen to uh, uh, Briggs. Cause I don't do this that often. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, You're so tired. we uh, we lost a good friend in the corn community tonight. I don't know if you had heard about it. Uh -oh. uh, A.G. Price, the general. Really? He passed away Saturday. Yeah. Ooh. What happened? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Ed, Ed's coming through. Hold on. Shut up, Ed. He has to go and blow his horn, that damn engineer. Give him time. He'll be over here soon. Yeah. Uh, well, a while back, 
uh, he was having problems, you know, with his lungs, and he needed a lung uh, a lung transplant. Right. So we had did a. Uh, he was going to the hospitals and stuff for surgeries, you know, to to pre uh, pre predetermine predetermine uh, if he could handle the transplant or not. Right. And they were like, "Oh yeah, come in and uh, we're gonna run tests and this and that and the other." And they were taking all his damn money, you know. Uh, they, they were draining his bank account and all that, and his insurance. And so the only thing that uh, uh, his insurance and all that wouldn't cover was uh, the hotel rooms where he was going to be staying at uh, up in Missouri. Because he lives in Arkansas. Yeah. But he had to go all the way up to uh, uh, St. Louis up there somewhere. And uh, we had a big fundraiser for him, uh, you know, to help him out. And, I mean, it that, that helped a lot. It was a lot of money. And then about five or six months later, he got the news that, no, uh, you're not eligible for, you can't handle, you're not eligible for the transplant. Damn. Yeah, I mean, you know, after they drained his bank account and insurance and all that, yeah, they, they hit him with that, you know? Dang, and that right. was like a kick in the butt, big time. So... And look, all the stuff they were doing to him at that time for that that certain period of time, that was weakening his body, you know? And he'd have been better off without it, put it that way, with yeah. all that stuff they were doing. No, sorry to hear about that. Stress tests and all that and everything. So... Anyhow, uh, Big T called me last night uh, at uh, 10 minutes to 8, right before Theo, Country Mile Garage, came right. around and said, I need you to come up on the panel with me. So me, Big T, Money, Money Maniacs, uh, D. Reese, uh, and then oh, Mark, Mark came up on there, you know, after a little while. And that's when he announced, you know, that uh, A.G. Price passed away, the general. And it was like, man, I knew that man well. Big T was like a brother to him. And, well, according to A.G.'s wife, I was like a brother to him, you know. But they were supposed to come down here not long ago, you know, and spend, you know, uh, a week, five days. Right. Like Money and his wife did, you know. Well, uh, she, you know, Stacy, his wife, she's still going to come down here, you know. Uh, and, you know, but, because uh, that's on her bucket list now. You know, instead of their bucket list. And I tell you what, man, I broke down. I did. I did. When she started talking about that, uh, coming down here from Mardi Gras and to eat and stuff, I'm like, oh. I, I, I broke down. Money and Big T had to take over for me, you know, while I was talking in the live panel while she was up there. Hey, hey, that man will be missed. He was loved by a lot of people in the coin community. He was. He was. Uh, years ago, when, like when Silver Seeker started uh, his half-dollar roll hunts and all, he was a moderator on uh, 
Big T's channel. Uh, I think Big T said he was his first moderator or something. And uh, uh, and then he was he was a moderator on uh, Silver Seeker's channel two years ago when Silver Seeker had his half dollar rule on. Everybody knew A.G. Price. Everybody did. I've heard you talk about him. Yeah, that man right. will be law. Yeah, general. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He used to come in uh, my live stream. Remember? Yep. Mater, we, you oh, would yeah. be in my live streams, and A.G. Price would come in. And i say, what's up, general? And i salute him. That was him. That's the guy I was talking about just now. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to get back inside and try and get some more sleep. So I haven't. Yeah, we went to sleep by 11. Like I said, it's about 2.30. She woke me up. So neither one of us has had much sleep. In. But with that painkiller they gave her, she's probably in there out. Out? What? No, yeah. she just made a comment. Thanks, everybody. Still real clean. I'm going to try. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's been a so. little bit ago. Yeah. Uh, four yeah. fifty-five. Yeah, yeah, it was seven minutes ago. I'm gonna. Yeah, I need to. I need to head off to bed myself. It's five o'clock. I need to eat. Uh, I think I'm gonna make me a corn dog or fry me, deep fry me a corn dog or something or two of them. So, all right, right Mater. Well, thank you for coming in, brother. No problem. Just want to give you a heads up, let you know what's going on with her. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. No problem. Oh, yeah. did you see that uh, the video I did uh, from Saturday? Uh, no, I didn't. I was showing off the uh, two uh, uh, sequential uh, numbered uh, silver circles I got from uh, Money. Plus the okay. two uh, sequential numbered five dollar star notes I wound up getting. And, okay. And then you know, of course, you know Tuesday, you know uh, Gleason he came on since Ed didn't come on there. You know he was mm -hmm. showing up that little uh, uh, Harley Davidson multi tool that actually came in the mail Saturday, so I uh, did mm. that. Too. Oh, okay. I, I've got a mail call to do, uh, actually, uh, myself. i got a mail call to do. Uh, a buddy of mine from Germany. And uh, you know you, you know the guy's name, but, I mean, I'll, I'll let everybody know later uh, for the mail call. All right. I, I got one. It's from Germany. Deutschland. Yeah. Deutschland. Yeah, I see it. All right. Well, I'm going to get on out of here, get back in the house, get some sleep. All right, Mayor. Be safe. All right. I'll see you. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to head out too. I'm getting a little hungry. I'm going to heat my grease up. So, uh, Mrs. Big, you want to do your outro, say your goodbyes? Yes, sir. I just want to let everybody know to send your prayers up high and put your roots down deep. Thank you, everyone. Wow, man, that's, yeah, that's a good one right there. That's a good one. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm glad I got to saw y'all again. I'm glad y'all got to saw me again. And it's always been good north of the grass. But remember, this is a holiday weekend, and today is Memorial Day. Please be safe on the highway. Okay? As always, love, peace, and crackling grease. Catch y'all later. Blue top.